Hello, Scorpio, and welcome to your monthly forecast. I'm Nicholas Ashbaugh. First and foremost, it's great to see everybody. A reminder, if you're brand new here, you can always use this for Sun, Rising Moon, and Venus. That's usually one of the first questions I see below, so I'll get that out of the way here. Um, additionally, we'll, we'll go into a deeper sort of dive of Sun, Rising, and Moon towards the end, so I do hope you stick around. Let's go ahead now and take a look at your channeled messages. These come through dreams, and today, as I was tuning into your sign, this was the first thing that came through. So I was shown a lightning storm and the general feel of this was uh, fun, actually. When I was a kid, I used to watch lightning storms with my dad. So depending on the context in the dream, it can be a positive sort of experience. And that's what I was remembering was just how beautiful it is. It lights up the sky, the smell of ozone as the storm comes in, the sound of the rain. There's a lot of cool things when you look at it from that perspective. So as I was uh, meditating on it, once I woke up, I thought, this is good. This is a positive tower moment. The tower can either be something that is unexpected and sometimes uncomfortable to go through, or it can be a very exciting moment that you bring into being, where you say or do something that creates a positive chain reaction. That's what I see. Uh, there is a moment here where you can bring things into being, and the universe is really just asking you this, are you ready to take that leap of faith and make that change? An example of positive towers, asking someone out on a date, asking someone to get married, receiving a job offer, having someone just say, you did an amazing job, would you be interested in this? And they open up something new for you. All of these examples, however, are kind of focused on the exterior. What I wanna leave you with before we go to the next slide is that I feel your tower moment can come from within, an epiphany, an aha moment where you decide that you want to make a change or that something is worth um, shifting things around and you know kind of putting yourself out there when that moment of realization comes through latch on to it and decide i'm going to do this and this is how i'm going to set up uh, this opportunity and make it the most successful thing possible okay so possibilities are definitely on the horizon here. It's just a question of preparation for, for many of you. The next dream was kind of like, uh, almost like a parallel universe. I was seeing different possibilities based on communication. So one line of possibilities was based on self-deprecating thought or putting something out there in a way that made people feel less intimidated. And here's an example of that. You could start something in a conversation like this saying, I'm not an expert on this, or this may sound outlandish, or, you know, I don't know about this. You're kind of putting this iffy energy around it and also diminishing your sort of what you're bringing to the table by saying, I know I'm not really experienced with this. And, you know, you may not like this, but stop, stop the train right there. I looked at another line of uh, possibilities based on neutral or even affirmative thought and here's the neutral one. And I think this is the easiest for most of us to get behind. You can just say, I have an idea. This is what came to me. What do you think? That is so much more powerful than, I know I'm not really an expert. And this may sound, because that is already making me question if I should listen to you. When you simply say, I have a thought, I have a question, I have an idea. It's neutral. It's, po it's basically a sandbox of possibilities. And I want to engage with you. I saw a third line of thought, which is, I have a really interesting idea, or I have an idea that I think could save you time. Now you're adding value to your thought, uh, and you're not doing so in a way that sounds like it's you know promoting yourself or anything. You're just saying, I'm really behind this idea, and I think because of your interest in here and here, this could actually be really good for you as well. So experiment with the neutral and see if you can work your way to the affirmative play around in the middle and see if this doesn't help you when communicating, when pitching ideas, when trying to be taken more seriously by coworkers, bosses, and your loved ones. Because when you start to see the value and allow others to do the same, it opens up a wealth of possibilities. Positivity creates possibility. And that was my big takeaway from seeing these three different parallel realities, basically, okay? Um, so speak at least neutrally of yourself, if not highly. Let's avoid self-effacing uh, or negative speech, especially about yourself. And I would say about anyone else, I chose Lady Justice here because she's fair, she's neutral, she focuses on what matters, and she weighs all of the, the options out there. 
Finally, the rainstorm that was coming through with the uh, lightning strike, it also felt to me like it could be a chance for many of you to just let go of stuff. Um, a good laugh, a good cry, a chance to also get in touch with your emotions, channel and use them in a way that could even be productive. So this is especially true for those of you out there that are creatives or engineers or just have this feeling like, I want to do something with my passion or my aggravation or my feeling. I'm gonna take this and use it to mold, shape, or move the world in a way that leaves it better than when I started. And isn't that kind of like why we're all here on the planet? I hope so. Um, but definitely that uh, emotional release was part of this. I chose the Six of Cups here because I think that leaning on others, connecting with other like-minded people could be really beneficial, especially for those of you feeling especially sensitive in this moment. Um, for the passion piece, it's showing that like, like energy attracts like energy. So as you get further into your passion or what makes you excited, then you connect with those people and attract those kind of energies as well. Um, and what I mean here is friends, peers, loved ones, soulmates, okay? Now, my friends, let's get into your reading. We're going to shuffle the deck and see what additional cards uh, the universe wants to bring through. And we're starting off with a joyful one because it flew out of the deck, the Nine of Cups. Let's go ahead and shuffle now. So interesting, we have a series of cards that uh, have been sticking together, so I'll do my best to pace myself as we've got double the messages. I'm sure you all are happy though, um, so this will be an action-packed reading. Spirit clearly has a lot to talk about with you today. Let's see this. Okay, let's begin. Uh, we're going to get started here, of course, with your catalyst cards, plural, and we'll talk about them. So Lord Ganesha is the deck that I'm using. Whether or not they're upright or reverse, it doesn't matter because this entire energy around this is all about re reducing or eliminating any blocks in your life. That's what Ganesha does. Um, so the first one is about prosperity. In and of itself, this card is just affirmative. It's like bringing in the Wheel of Fortune. With the fact that it's reversed, it's kind of what I was talking about with channeled messages, which is don't sell yourself short. Be very, um, be very affirmative and positive when it comes to what's possible, because clearly Lord Ganesha sees the value. I see the value. I hope you do as well. And it's also saying if there's been any um, hiccups, bumps, or just basically lack, lack of prosperity in the past, let's leave it in the past. As you walked out into that rainstorm, all that karmic energy uh, melted away. So this is a chance to just say, we're at a fresh start. You can't control what didn't work out. And everybody's been through something where you think, I wish I had acted differently. Let me just tell you today, forgive yourself, release that thought. You, you came to the right reading because this reset that you're having could actually be the tower moment for you. It's saying, I'm just going to allow myself today to make better decisions and I'm going to make tomorrow amazing. I, I understand today may have been frustrating and yesterday may have not been the best, but we're on the road to something really, really good here. And that's what this is. Uh, revelation. This would be like the judgment card in tarot. And something new is being revealed. The curtain is coming back. And if judgment were reversed, what happens sometimes is disbelief. It's you thinking, oh my God, is this real? Can I really handle it? Um, it could be also the inner saboteur or the, what is the best word here, imposter syndrome. Um, again, thinking like you're in over your head. You're exactly where you need to be, Scorpio. And this revelation card is the universe revealing a path to you. Really powerful and important energy coming through today. Um, so I'm really honored to be able to be here for you because I feel like some of you need to hear this. 
Um, I can feel the energy, I can feel the emotion. Uh, so let's take a moment and just scan the cards here and see what the overall trajectory is. So I love that a joyful card flew out and that's, it's the importance of making room for joy. And then we have like the 10th cup on here. So I think that some relationship um, healing is coming forth and it's coming externally and also internally. And we're looking at that, that junction between the environment and you and how you're actually having an effect on that this month as well. Everything else looks really good. Queen of Cups and Three of Pentacles, near future and outcome. So um, I like everything that I see around it. It all seems pretty manageable. Let's get started with these two. We've already hinted at it. So your center card is one of joy and celebration. She looks so happy there, right? Lounging with all the angels filling up that final ace here, this the ace of cups here. So I think for many of you, you are very close to something that's worth celebrating. You're very close to overcoming a difficult emotional moment. Were this reversed, um, it would have represented something very challenging. It might be for some of you, but the way that the card presented itself flying out of the deck is upright. And so that means that things are turning around, right? So we see a turnaround or um, you going on a positive uptick uh, trajectory wise. And some of this, I mean, this is a champagne bottle, so celebration. Ace of Cups can represent an offer in love. It can represent people that are interested in you, paying attention to you. It can be praise. It can just be you focusing on your own mental and emotional health and finally feeling that sense of worth, inner worth, self-worth, because that attracts not only good career opportunities and money and abundance, but love. This is the single most important card I need to pull in a love reading, but I would also say it's one of the most important one for success as well. Because if an Ace of Cups appears, it means, and especially in a pivotal position, it means that you're not gonna seek an external filler for happiness. You've, you found or you're about to find or you're capable of finding the key to success is right here. So that's priority number one is happiness. And if there's anything you can do to increase or connect with that happiness this month, this is the, this is the, the key to your success, okay? And if you're looking for love, yes. Or if you want to heal a relationship, this is a, a, a positive card as well. So some great stuff. And again, together it equals 10 of cups, which is love and partnership and relationships. It's good stuff, folks. Let's look at the karma right now. And this is the thing that some of you may still be feeling a little challenged with. So we have Knight of Swords in reverse. Let's break it down. First of all, I love that he's cutting through the clouds. This can be almost like calling in that lightning storm saying, let's deal with this. Um, a reversed Knight of Swords is very direct. So one lesson that some of you are learning the importance of is saying stop, don't, or no. And it's easier said than done. And even for those of you that are really strong people, sometimes people get into our lives and they, it's like our throat closes up. So if it happened in the past, give yourself credit. You learned from it. In the present and in the future in particular, if you don't like it, if it doesn't feel right, or if it's outright wrong, use your voice. It matters. And it can bring about positive change. If you need to speak out about something, do that as well. This is a fast moving card. Therefore, when it's reversed, it's saying, take a break, slow down for a moment. Take a moment to review what's been done, what you plan to do. Feel free to revise, edit, or create something new altogether when it comes to future plans. This is a reviewing and an editing card, and especially when it comes to what direction you wanna move in. Finally, and absolutely aligned with what I said earlier, it's avoiding negative speech. Particularly because whenever I look at a reverse card, it can be invert, like um, internal. So we want to avoid anything that's negative about self. I can't, I'll never, I won't, this never works for me. And whenever we put it out there, we're speaking these things into our path and we're reinforcing the energy. If there is a tower that comes through this month, let's let it break down the insecurity, the fear, the cloud that this, this keeps happening. This is the month, this is the day, this is the reading that breaks you away from that 
and opens up whatever path wants to reveal itself. So let's go ahead now and look at recent past. This is something that may still be fresh on your mind. It may be something that's still presenting itself here. We have a reversed Eight of Swords, which is basically an eye-opening opportunity or a liberating opportunity because upright, it shows that you're feeling like you're painted in a corner or trapped. Reversed, it's saying the reverse of that. It's that revelation energy coming through and saying, hey, there's a way through or there's a way out of this. So what I got um, in my mind when I saw this, I heard the words free to decide. It is freedom of thought. It is free will that is going to help you. The illusion that you can't do it, uh, that if, some, if you in your own mind say, I can't, or this won't happen, or someone around you is saying, you're not enough of this for that, whatever. You're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough. That kind of stuff, it's just a thought, it's not the reality. Free yourself of limiting thoughts and separate yourself from people that project unnecessary uh, sort of limits upon you. It's really their own fears or anxieties. Sometimes it's a parent, sometimes it's a friend. Oftentimes it's people around us that, that love us, but only with conditions and sometimes with fear and oftentimes with attachments. That's not the lovers, that's the devil energy and we don't want that. So you are free to make up your own mind. Um, because I read intuitively, I can pull a card and hear that and that's what I saw. And so it's, it's a thought, the thought that creates the Eight of Swords. That's what Spirit was showing me. And um, spread your wings, do what you need to do. It's your life, it's your voice, it's your, it's your choice at the end of the day. And uh, not surprisingly, we got a strong energy coming forth in the crowning position. Lots of fire here, lots of passion. This is the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands can move things forward. So by doing all the stuff we've talked about, um, exercising free will and thought, embracing things that bring joy in your life, and saying no to things that uh, are causing blocks, you're going to be able to push the needle forward in a really good way. Knights show up. They show up, they um, basically, they walk the walk, they don't just talk the talk. And by doing that, you're going to eventually get yourself to the king of wands because people see that you're a person of your word. And that's something that I get behind and I appreciate when I meet someone as well. This is the light bulb. I mean, you can see all the light behind him, the, the fire, the passion. Um, wands in particular are about things percolating in our head space. And the knight can take that and like in a relay race, bring it forth and really across the finish line. So if you allow yourself to, to connect with that lightning bolt moment that I talked about, that may be coming out of nowhere, um, the two nights are going to help you. But this epiphany requires many of you to say no, to move away from something, and really to understand that if lightning is striking, if this, if this moment of inspiration if the muse comes through this is the time that you have to listen to that and really make the most of it okay near future a celebratory card the queen of cups things are starting to flow in the right direction again it's a great time for love for romance for deepening healing or moving a relationship to the the next level this is a card of love passion creativity and control control in a good way knowing how to harness emotions and how to also channel them into things that, like I said way back at the beginning, you can really make a difference with. Um, feeling like you're putting your, your sort of like special signature on things before and leaving the world a better place, right? So writers, musicians, teachers, um, really good public speakers, they're all connecting to this energy because it's, it's something that touches us in the heartstrings, right? So you have the potential to be successful this month by touching people creatively and passionately in the heart space. And if you happen to be someone who is, like I said, an engineer, a writer, a musician, an artist, this month you're coming through extra strong. And again, if you're looking for love, this is putting you in the spotlight. This is something where people are taking note and it's a good time to mix, to mingle, and to network. Let's see how you're showing up here. It's busy. <laughs> the Four of Swords in reverse is a card basically indicating that your schedule may be so busy that you don't have time to rest. This card focuses more on the meditative portion of that, so let's talk about that. What this means is if you, if you basically don't allow yourself, if you starve yourself of meditation or planning energy, uh, what happens sometimes is you don't 
allow yourself enough of a an opportunity to see everything that's in front of you. It's just sort of like you put horse blinders on and you can only see what's right here. When you close your eyes, you get to see 360 degrees um, and really see everything that's possible. So let's allow for all directions, all dimensions, all possibilities. The only way to do that is to make sure you're getting enough sleep, to exercise, and to meditate if that's something that you're called to. By the way, meditation takes many forms. It's not just sitting and going om. It can be writing. It could be uh, if you're someone that likes exercise, what's coming to mind is those of you that like to hike, walk, or jog. A lot of times the action and the re repetition of that is a meditative sort of energy and good ideas start to come through. So gardening, walking, exercising, painting, it's not just about sitting with your legs crossed, your eyes closed, and your hand in a mudra. There's a lot of different activities that can constitute meditation. So try some different things this month and allow yourself extra time so that when you have that free time and free space, you're going to be able to think your way out of a problem through a challenge and find the liberation that was promised to this bird or this crow in the Eight of Swords. And that is really important and that is worth the time and energy um, to basically you know, take care of yourself. Quality and quantity of sleep matter. You need a certain amount. Your body, you and you alone know that, but find what you need and make sure you're sticking to it and just slow down a little bit. And that's the main message on this card. Let's take a look at your environment. We have the King of Swords in reverse. So as an external sort of energy, this can be someone who's hypercritical, um, who speaks before listening or just likes to bark out an order. That's the first visual and download that I got. This is also challenging you to speak your truth, do all the things we talked about earlier with this card, and it's about basically elevating things and showing people the possibilities, not letting one piece of criticism, however loud or however you know hurtful it may be, take you off your path. It's one voice in a chorus of many, okay? The other thing that I'm getting when I look at this is to really make sure that you understand once something is said, published, or spoken, it's forever out there. Uh, you can't really take it back. And we see someone trying to grab onto that sword and it is sort of like saying, oh, I wish I could unsend or unsay that. And just know that once it's sent or done, it's, it's out there. So know that words carry weight, that they can really make a difference. So again, making sure that things this month are elevated, positive, and affirmative in all ways and, and shapes and forms is gonna be important. Um, this is also a card that shows that if there's something that you need to do, do it swiftly. Um, because what I got when I saw that, not related to the picture, but just uh, from guides, was the early bird gets the worm. So there may be someone that just speaks a, lot, a little bit louder or speaks first, and they'll get the attention. So if you have a great idea, use the tools that we talked about in the channeled messages, at the very least be neutral and say, I'd like to add to that, or I have something that I, I want to talk about as well. Better yet, say, I have a great idea that I'd like to share with you, or I have something really important. Put it out there. Make sure that you are shining a spotlight with, with enthusiasm at the very least, because that, that pulls people in, that allows things to take sale, and, um, and then people are going to hopefully get behind you on that as well, okay? Let's look at opportunities here, and this can also constitute hopes and fears. Well, it's just love and relationships, folks. I say just, um, you know, kind of like in a, <laughs> a playful way here, because what we see here is that they're, they're coming to a head this month in a really important way. Some of you are very ready to either take a relationship to the next level or find love. Nine of Cups, Ace of Cups, realizing that you're deserving, you're ready, you're more than enough for yourself. And then we have here a very lovely relationship energy with the Queen of Cups and Page of Cups. Now, there is a bit of an age or experience gap with these two. Um, I always prefer to see like a knight and a queen or a king and a queen or a knight and a page. Um, so when we have this little gap, what it can show sometimes is, again, we talked earlier about like imposter syndrome or feeling like the scales are um, not completely balanced. Energetically, it feels like you're much closer than you think, but there may be something externally that makes you feel like, oh, they're more this, more popular, uh, more well-known, richer, whatever. 
just know that a lot of this is perception. It's not reality. So perceive that, that you are more equal than you might imagine. The page can also just be positive communication. So it's com this is a card of communication. It's a receptive card. You may be receiving this. This is saying receive it without prejudice or filter. Communicate as well in that same sort of energy. And in doing so, you're going to bring about the, the best possible outcome. But this can be a person coming in saying, I like you, or I'm interested in this, or it can be, again, even an offer on the table for work saying you're the one. It, it's good stuff, the Page of Cups. We just have to make sure that you're, you're receptive and you're believing of that because that's the only place where I see any potential um, sort of friction coming through. Let's now take a look at your outcome card. And it's one of the best that I could pull here in an outcome because it's recognition, it's mastery of any sort of task at hand. Uh, it's also something being noticed, picked up, or possibly even like published for some of you by others because of the value that it brings. It's very, very positive. Um, and it also shows the power of uh, speaking and writing. Once you kind of communicate something into being, it makes it more real. So some of you are getting ready to sign on the dotted line. Uh, we had a lot of revisionary cards here with the both the knight and the king. It might take a couple of rounds of revision to get here, but this ultimately is something that is set into motion through a contract and it's good. Three of Pentacles can represent higher education, publication, learning, and when, the, when it's learning, it's saying anything that you set your mind to doing, you can master that skill or that, um, or that idea. And um, oftentimes it's even collegiate where the Eight of Pentacles might be more of an apprentice or lower education, this is higher education. Um, any way you look at it, it's good. And definitely it's the writer's card or the artist's card here as well. So if you want to create, this is the month. We see that, folks, with the uh, Queen of Cups here. I said you could control your emotions or channel them. Look at how it's being done here, putting it into a tangible, physical form here and in, in a very exciting way. Okay, let's move on to another two-card combination here as we get into your expanded forecast. We look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. This is in the area of health, which is mind, body, and spirit. Um, so both cards came through reverse. We're going to do the same thing that we did with Ganesha and see how we can get you to embrace what's on these cards. Okay, this is completely in alignment with this. Some of you haven't been taking time to rest, to meditate, to sleep. So we can take this at face value. Don't deprive yourself of a chance to breathe. Thank you, angels. I breathe with ease, knowing that you're here. Um, we're looking at health, so some of you might be focusing on things that are blocking the ease with which you breathe. So this could be allergies. Um, some of you might be deciding to give, give up cigarette smoking. Um, you might also be reducing any sort of toxic um, chemicals or things in the environment, just kind of clearing it out so that you can breathe more easily. And then exercising that throat chakra, the inner voice. So many swords cards came through. They support that. No, maybe repeating it, showing like no means no. Um, really making sure that you don't get into a situation that doesn't feel right. And sometimes people that we trust, a boss, a parent, a teacher, a doctor, especially a doctor because we're looking at health, they don't explain something and they just get started on something. Hit the brakes, pump the brakes and say, I don't understand this or I didn't agree to this or I need more information. You'll never regret getting informed and use your voice, ask questions. Thank you angels for guiding me through my inner voice. The throat chakra also carries with it a lot of different organs that are packed into a tight space. The thyroid, the throat itself and esophagus. Um, I would also say upper spine. So many different things that could be coming into focus. So really make sure that if there's anything that's not feeling right here, you, there are specialists and ear, nose and throat specialists. That would be the perfect person to connect with if there's anything that feels just a little bit out of sorts. Now let's just look at the regular uh, spread of cards here and see what other messages are coming forth. Obviously, we've already talked about sleep, but I'll say it one more time. Both quality and quantity are important. This usually has to do with prescriptions, so making sure that everything is compatible. Uh, many times when we have different specialists in our life and they're not communicating prescriptions, there can sometimes be um, interactions that are not ideal. So make sure that to each doctor you update that list for those of you that are on any sort of medications. Um, and just revisit dosage and things like that as well. 
general, uh, we're looking a lot at control of emotions or channeling of emotions. So one way that that can happen, of course, is through therapy. Um, so find someone that can help you harness, understand, and deal with what's going on. This is about eye and ear um, sort of general health. So if it's been too long since you've had your eyes examined or if you're having some trouble hearing, please take care of that. Otherwise, the cards are good and I like that and I think we covered everything that we needed to right here. Um, the main thing here is slowing down the pace. Some of you have way too many activities or extracurricular things in front of you. So please take care of yourself and don't overdo it. Let's move on to wealth. Everybody has to deal with resources and resources are time, energy and money. So let's see what our uh, what kind of energies are coming through for that. We have the koi fish here and the koi fish is not in a school. It's on its own. So some of you are working solo. I get a lot of comments around entrepreneurs. Well, you jumped out here with this koi fish. You've got what it takes, but fish are able to be flexible. They can go in multiple directions. And so having that omnidirectional view of things this month, just like we talked about a little bit earlier, that's going to be really, really important. Making sure that you have room to breathe. Some of you might be feeling a little bit caged in, feeling like I've gone as far as I can in this environment, in this program, at this job. And this is about finding your own way. And so that's the first message coming through with respect to wealth. We're going to look at those working, seeking work, and retirees and students. In working, I'm also going to break it down into entrepreneurs this month because we got that energy. So I'm going to start with that first. If you own your own business or are thinking of doing that, we have a celebration card. So things are going in the right direction. We have a good card when it comes to general money or contracts. So if you're not seeing it right now, it's on the horizon. Keep up with the creative flow. That's the main message here. Uh, I think that some of you are going to have to prepare to wear a lot of hats and there may be one too many things on your plate right now. Four of Swords shows me that moment where business, including a self-employment opportunity, kind of grows beyond being a one person show. So even if it is just contracting out a specialist here and there, or maybe hiring a, um, you know, an assistant or a part-time person, I feel like you're on the precipice of that. Okay, that's the main message here is you might have too many things on your plate and you have to be discerning. Cut some things out, say no, or hire some help, okay? Moving on to those that are just employed and not starting something new. Um, you still have that boss energy here with the Knight of Wands. I would love it to be the King of Wands, but we have instead King of Swords coming through in the environment. So we see you using your voice to show your leadership. And I talked about at the very beginning how to elevate yourself, even through being neutral, putting things out in the best possible perspective, sharing your thoughts, your ideas and your passions with others without prejudice and without self-deprecating words. Once more worth repeating here. Also, some of you are really getting good at negotiating and understanding the importance of not accepting the first thing that's presented to you. So make sure your voice is being heard. Speak up if you have a question. Revise as necessary. Negotiate. You're going to land in a good place with negotiations by using all the things that we talked about. Some of you are just tired of not being seen and heard. So you're going to flap your wings a bit, use your voice a bit, and this is a month to be seen. I'd also like to highlight the importance of relationships, uh, professional relationships, that is. You can get a lot more done in a group. We see group energy in the Nine of Cups. We see it here in the Queen of Cups, definitely in the page. So more can be done with the support and the buy-in and the cooperation of others. So part of being successful this month is playing well with others. And the only thing that strikes me as a challenge is there are at least one, if not two people around you that um, just tend to talk louder or talk without necessarily having something to say. And I'm sure we've all been in meetings where there's just a person that shares something and you're like, thanks, that really didn't add to the conversation. But make sure that if you are in a, um, what's, the, what's the word for this, if you're facilitating the meeting, Make sure that you're ensuring that everybody has time. And when someone has overshared, you could just say, why don't you go ahead and let's write some of that stuff down. We'll table it for now. We have to give everyone a chance or you know, capture it on the board and then we'll revisit it. Uh, you'll have to put on your best facilitation hat and make sure that you are 
kind of like reining in all the cats <laughs> and making sure that they're working together. And that could be the challenge there again, for those of you that may be in a group where everybody thinks they're the boss, okay? And you can't ignore stuff here. That, that's the other thing. With Eight of Swords, Two of Swords, we really need to pay attention to something here from the past, fix it, then you can address whatever's coming through in the present. Um, if you're looking for work this month, let's shift to that. So job seekers, um, I actually feel like it's a good time to be job seeking. Now, this card is saying, you know, really push yourself out there. Be relentless is the word that came to mind when I saw this. Uh, I also see concise and brief. So brevity is going to be your friend when it comes to how you're presenting yourself in an email, in a slide, in, a, in an interview. If you can say a lot in a few words, there's your power. That's going to help you out quite a bit. It's not about elocution to the point of boredom. It's really be succinct and be impactful. I mean, everybody's attention spans nowadays are diminishing. So if you can pack it into to less, you're going to be heard and seen a little bit more. And that's going to help you stand out from the group, which is what you need when you're applying for work. It's really important that the next job that you go to gives you a sense of creative freedom, or at least you like the place a lot. So you either need to love the job, the cultural climate, or what you're doing. Uh, preferably a combination of those, but pick one of those and, and that's going to help you decide. I see a signature. I see a contract. That's good. It could take two to three weeks since we have the power of three there. And this King of Swords is traveling. So you may need to do an in-person visit and it may require hopping on a plane or train or going, you know, several dozen miles out of what you normally would. Uh, but it's it's worth it. I feel like it's worth it. So take the trip, make the make the face to face thing happen. And, um, and it looks good. OK, don't force a contact that doesn't want to be contacted. So if you've if you've sent two or three follow ups, enough is enough. Focus on where the action and the energy is. For students and retirees, I'm going to start first with students. Students, it's a great time for you. Um, this is a card of celebration. This is a card of completing things. It literally is a collegiate card. Um, I see a lot of creative energy here. Sensitivity is the, the challenge here. There may be one bad grade or one professor that speaks poorly, but there's a lot of positive. And trust me, years and years later, nobody really cares what I got on a test for me, for instance, if I think of undergraduate, it would be my um, college algebra. I was a journalism and an English major anyway, and they still made me take because I, I got a Bachelor of Science. So I still had to take certain science and math classes. And I'm like, seriously? Um, <laughs> so that class wasn't my favorite, but nobody, nobody cares. Um, there were other classes that I took that maybe I didn't ace, but they were so valuable, like uh, I took a economics class and um, several business classes, and I use them every single day. Um, statistics, economics, and just general business. Like, they were so valuable. So I'm glad that I had that Bachelor of Science for my undergraduate um, because I needed to round out some of the, the artistic stuff with some practical arts as well. So it's not important how well you're doing <laughs> per se, like GPA wise. It's more like, did you gather the skills you needed? Because you can get a B, but take with you life lessons that are going to forever help you. Um, so really learn it and don't worry so much on the GPA. Uh, it will not it will not affect you in the way that you think it will several decades into your life. Retirees, it's a good time to be retired. Congratulations if you're at that point. It feels like the focus is on things that bring you joy. This is a leisurely card. Relax a little bit if you can. This is a card of love and being playful and being creative, being artistic. Lean into that. This is a really receptive card. Open yourself up to new experiences. Whatever brings joy and whatever connects you to others. That's what I see. Travel's here, but it's not the main focus. You can you can connect and, and expand your horizons right from your own home if you want to. But um, I think it's important to be able to connect with others this month. And some of you want to write or paint, and I'm all for that. Let's move on to love and relationships. This is all aspects of your sort of like relationship field here from friends to family to loved ones. We have a playful and intelligent otter coming through. Get out there a little bit more. That's really what this card is indicating. Um, being playful, being present, 
and not underestimating how much people might like to be around you. So coming out and getting ready to play. And that's what I kind of pick up on when I see this. Let's break this down into three categories, those in love, looking for love, or happily single. If you're in, uh, if you're in a relationship this month, things are going okay, it feels like. The Ace of Cups, the Nine of Cups, the Queen of Cups, the Page of Cups. It's kind of what I'd like to see. And these are in pivotal positions. What are the challenges in relationships? Some of you, I mean, I feel like this comes up a lot, and I've seen it a lot already in April, being seen and heard. So anything that you can do to validate your partner, and if you're not feeling listened to or appreciated, communicating the frustration in the best possible way, saying, I would really like some time to just talk, or I love it when you ask about this. You know, I'm not a coach, but not a, uh, I should say I'm not a therapist. I guess I'm an energy coach here, but speak with a relationship therapist or coach if you need it. But that's kind of what I'm getting is just being able to show the appreciation because I feel like it's there. The love is there. The communication may be absent. The communication showing up very brief, very short sometimes. Slow down a little bit, listen a little bit more, ask for that same energy from your partner. And I feel like if you do the work, it'll happen. It's a very positive spread. The only thing that can get in the way this month also is if you haven't had your coffee or your sleep, there's nothing worse than being bombarded by things when you're not at your best. So if you are in that position and the partner comes in or a family member comes in, you can say, I care. Trust me, I really care. I need five minutes. I need to get this coffee. I need, I need to wake up a little bit and then I will make time for you because I love you and I care about you. But right now, my brain is off and it won't work. Um, so... If they can't understand that boundary, that's that's a different <laughs> topic altogether. But communicate why and then set, a, set an appointment, set some time. I was frustrated the other day when someone kept putting me off. Oh, I got busy. Oh, I'm busy. I was like, just better for you to say tomorrow's better than to make me wait all day and never talk to me. That is disrespecting my time. This was not a loved one. It was just someone I was doing business with. They called me at the end of their day and then I'm, I have an appointment with them the next day. I, I was like, time is valuable, mine as well. Um, so feel free to put your boundaries out there. It's, it's, it's okay, sometimes people need to hear that. And just be reminded that it's, it's a two-way street. Ultimately, I don't think you even need to get defensive or anything, it's just about saying, if you need sleep, get it. If you are tired, say, can we, can we do this tomorrow? Or can we do this later? And if not, say, okay. I'm just not my best today, so I just wanted to let you know if I'm short, that's what it's about. It's not about you. Setting it out there is all you can do. And, you know, I, I'm actually not getting a lot of agitation. So it's a good month for partnerships overall. Validation and listening are the challenges. Not catching someone off guard and not bothering someone when they're tired. That's the best advice I can give you. Okay, focusing now on um, those that are looking for love this month. If you're looking for love, Yes, you can find it. Um, we get water signs coming through. We also have fire and air. Here's the problem. There's not a lot of clarity. Whenever that happens, what's going on is it's like, well, maybe I want this. Maybe I want that. There's a lot of different things and the universe is trying to do the mental math and figure out how do I show up for you? Be discerning. Um, you don't have to accept the first offer, just like in negotiations. But also be more selective in what you're telling the universe you're ready for. Uh, things that I see that could be interesting. This can be a partner and their child. So you may be pulling in a really favorable partnership, but you know they're coming out of a relationship and they might have children. There could also be someone that's still attached to someone. And, it, and so I think getting to know someone and make sure, making sure that you're on the same page looking for the same thing, that's really key here as well. Someone that you're pulling in in a, in a dating realm could also just talk the whole date but they don't ask about you or they don't really listen. So if that happens, it doesn't matter how attractive they are, that is a uh, sort of trait that makes it challenging to be with someone in the long run. So pay attention to the little signs this month. It definitely feels like you can meet people. And for some of you, it's unexpected. It's through work, school, or some sort of a, an activity here. So keep your eyes and ears peeled, okay? As the birds are singing behind me, they're saying, yes, listen to, the, listen to what's going on in the conversation next to you. Someone might be interested or trying to get your attention. For those that are happily single, congratulations. This is a great month for you. Um, I feel like 
again, there's this awakening, creative awakening, empowerment kind of energy that's coming through. Going back to the Ganesha cards, um, you might really be on the heels of success or just learning something about yourself. That's going to still open up the social spheres. So you might be single, but you're not going to be alone this month. It feels like if you put yourself out there, there's a lot of different people that want to mix and mingle with your energy as well. But creatively and professionally, that's where the, the main focus wants to go. And then just you being in a place where you're really at peace with who you are, what you want to do. And uh, that peace kind of attracts other people. They're like, this seems serene. You seem cool and calm. I want to be around you. I want to learn from you. All right, let's go ahead now and move to your destiny card. We have something that's hard to do right? It's hard. Acceptance. I'm learning to accept the things I can't change. Amen to that. Gosh, it's so, it's such a valuable lesson. You can't change sometimes people's bad habits. You can't change the way they feel or don't feel. You can't change the past, but you can affect the present. You can really focus on the things that are receptive to your energy. Accept yourself and love yourself and accept other people for all their shortcomings as well. Acceptance is one of the key ingredients to push off devil energy because when you are able to accept, see, and not put strings on things, that, that is an elevated form of love and just an elevated place to be. So there you go. <laughs> Let's go ahead now and take a look at sun rising and moon sign energy and see what else the universe wants to share with you. Sun rising and moon. It's all great stuff. Sun sign messages. This is the promise of what I talked about earlier. You have the nine of cups and the ace of cups in the center, and you add them together and you have this. We actually have a time marker on this. We have a Christmas tree. So for some of you, the work that you're doing could pay off in the fourth quarter of the year, around November or December. Um, but this is also just a joyful card. The traditional ten of cups has no time marker on it. It's basically about connecting with people that really want to, it can be your extended family, chosen family, it can represent new love that goes to the next level. All of these are good things. But you, you might be noticing that this card came through in a reverse state. And just like that dog outside that's barking, sometimes people put pressure on us and they push their thoughts, their ideas, their words onto us and it can feel agitating like that. And so what you, what you need to do this month is have really good boundaries between friends, family, and coworker uh, energy and just know where they stop and where you begin. And know that your happiness um, is not something that's really on the table for discussion. So let's put it this way. Acceptance in those groups should not come at the sacrifice of your happiness. Success in your life, not at the sacrifice of your happiness. That is conditional love. We want unconditional love. You have what it takes and you are worth all of that without the strings attached, okay? Don't force things and don't feel like you have to sacrifice your own well-being to, to fit into something. And that's the main message there for Sun. All right, moving on to Rising. We have Queen of Swords, Upright. And she's got, uh, basically this is Athena here. So we have Athena, her owl. We also have Medusa energy here. What's cool about the Queen of Swords is she definitely could connect with the Medusa energy and put something to a stop if necessary. But because this card is upright, she's speaking from a place of wisdom. She's someone that people want to listen to, follow, and be around. And you have that energy this month if you want to connect with it. And she's also able to articulate her passion, her creativity, and um, all the things that would be a part of the Queen of Cups. So definitely this month... Your words and your actions are on display, but in the best possible way. So get out there and remember the, what we talked about earlier, just speaking from a place of wisdom. So think it through. Good public speakers will pause and just say, that's a great question. It reminds me of that. They don't put a lot of fillers. They don't apologize for needing time. They can buy themselves time by saying things like that. They can even ask a question. Before I answer that, let me, let me ask you this. Is this, do you want me to focus on this? Do you want me to focus on... Meanwhile, they're thinking their way through that. So buy yourself time, pause, make sure that you're ready, 
Know what you know, know what you don't know. If you need more time, say, it's a good question, but it requires some research. How about we talk about this tomorrow? I can come back to you or let me put you in touch with this person. They are an expert. They can help you out. Good leaders don't have to know everything. They just need to connect you um, with the right person. Same thing as a producer. They don't have to know all the answers. They just know the people that can make it happen. So be a good producer this month and connect with that kind of energy. That's where your power exists. Moon sign, taking one step at a time. You don't have to finish it all today. We have the fool here. Um, the fool is in reverse. This fool is also kind of looking at a shadow. And sometimes we get fooled. We can actually read it at face value by uh, basically a, a shadow of doubt, a shadow of fear, etc. So taking one step at a time, not getting into your, your emotions too much and knowing that eventually you're going to work past whatever the current challenge is. This can also represent um, getting sidestepped a little bit and we want to focus on the path ahead. There could be a lot of things coming through that are trying to distract you, but your focus is so important. I mean, in fact, if we take a look at the traditional fool, uh, that's what that little dog is doing on the side. A lot of times you'll see the dog tugging at the heel or the sock of the fool, and that's saying, slow down a second, watch where you're going. And that's what this is about. Don't let somebody distract you. There's something better waiting for you. You're on the right path, one step at a time, stay present. That's all you have to do, okay? But this is a month where many of you are taking the first step. So enjoy that. It's fun to step into something new with a clean slate. Let's go ahead now and take a look at your final question. This can be anything that I didn't cover, anything that's important to you. Let's go ahead and give the cards a shuffle and see what they have to say. We actually have a card that kind of stuck on the table, so this is gonna be two parts. Ooh, I love this. Okay, so the card that I pulled is the tower. And the card on the table was the Four of Wands. This is what it's all about. So I tuned into Tower Energy. We got it. It took until the very end, the last question. So thank you for whatever your question might be. Let's take a look at how Zen this person is in the Tower. They called it into being. They're watching it take place. They're an agent of the change that we see. And they're cool with it. So for those of you that asked a question in this sort of shape or form, is it the right time to make this move? Yes, and it's going to change everything. If you're ready for a massive shift or change or movement, you've got it, but you need to be ready for it. It's also reminding you that once you step through that portal or make that change or move, there may not be a going back. So just be ready for that step and all the cool stuff it's about to bring in. Because for many of you, you're environment, your job, your life could be changing for the better. Try to stay as cool, calm, and collected as this figure up there. Kind of reminds me of Shiva, creation and destruction, bringing it all into being. Um, you know, this is your time for that to happen. So the Four of Wands was on the table here, and this is partnership that might be coming forth. And we see a person at a crossroads, and we got a lot of cards around love. So for those of you that are asking about love, um, or a relationship or a passionate project, it's going to open up a lot of doors. So this is bringing something down um, or uh, making a, a change. And this is what it brings forth, which is movement and opportunity. It's not a simple yes or no, but what I see for you this month is a change for the better, a crossroads, and a chance for you to set the stage for something really, really great. Four of Wands is antithetical to the tower. The tower is crumbling. The Four of Wands is firm, steady, and reliable. Sometimes we have to let go of something or someone that isn't in order to get to this. And that's the takeaway. And because we got two cards, it's like a two-parter. And I feel like, yes, it's important to make changes, but yes, it's also going to be really pivotal. And there's still going to be some choices you have to make. All of this month is about making a change for the better. The outcome card is no different here, or this uh, final card. There could also just be someone coming into your life that can help change everything. This could be literally, I, we talk about agents of change. It could be an agent for those of you that need representation. It could be a lawyer. It could be a mentor. And they're going to help open things up. They're going to help change. It's like a paradigm shift for many of you. Okay? Stay organized, stay focused, and really connect with people that then emanate with this. 
partners for life is what the four of wands is. Um, ride or die kind of energy. All right. Such a powerful reading. I felt it from the beginning. This is one of my favorite ones this month. So thank you for the magic. Uh, I never know what I'm going to get when I sit down, but there's a lot of you today that were really bringing some amazing energy. If you enjoyed this reading, please do me a favor. It's free and it helps. Like and subscribe. When you opt into notifications, remember to opt into all. Um, I noticed that a lot of people aren't getting all the notifications on YouTube. I don't control that, but I can give you a way to make sure that you're in the loop, and that's to follow me on social media. It's always my full name, Nicholas Ashbaugh. No extra spellings, no second accounts, etc. If you have any questions, you can always go uh, to my website to get the links there, or on the main channel page. If you click uh, there, it'll be um, posted as well. Just safety and common sense here. Per the what I just said earlier, I, I don't use private messages. I don't have extra accounts. If someone tries to contact you and offers you something, just block and report. You know where to find me here and uh, let me know about it as well so I can do the same. New videos come out every Monday, Thursday, and Friday, and I do a live stream every Sunday around 9.15 a.m. Pacific, so I'd love to see you there. You can also check out my daily card readings and brand new to the mix, I also have a podcast. It's on the podcast tab here. It's also on all major platforms, including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And uh, that's everything. By the way, if you want to give back, you can do it through Super Stickers, Super Chat, and memberships. All of those things help me with creating new things like podcasts or just showing up every day. So I want to end by simply saying thank you. Thanks for being a part of this reading, for being the best part of what I do here on YouTube, and for showing your support. I couldn't be here without you. Take care, and I'll see you soon.